Hello fellow coffee botherers, in this video I'm doing an updated review on the Sage or Breville Bambino Plus and answering the question, is this the best coffee machine under £400 or $500? I first reviewed the Bambino Plus back in March 2020, it was the sixth video I published here, I had about three subscribers, I had no clue what I was doing with video creation. I still don't have much clue, but I work with people who do, so I thought it was about time I did the Bambino Plus justice by properly reviewing it with the new studio setup. This is going to be a series of new videos on the Bambino Plus, which will include a comparison video with the Bambino. I'm also going to revisit the how-to guides I did a couple of years ago, but I'm not going to tell you specifically what other videos we're going to do because I want you to tell me. Let me know in the comments and or in the community thread if there's any videos you want me to do with the Bambino Plus, and we'll try to do them either as a standard video or as a short. So the Bambino Plus has become one of the best selling espresso machines in the world over the past few years. But is it the best espresso machine for the money with the various other machines that have been released in the meantime? Keep watching and you'll find out. And by the way, it might depend on where you're watching this video from. Stick around to find out more. First, let's fire through the specs. Dimensions, it's tiny at 30.5 centimeters tall, just over 19 centimeters wide, 35 centimeters deep. That is much smaller than something much bigger and slightly smaller than something slightly bigger. It has a 1.9 litre water tank. Officially, it'll take two litres actually if you're filling it in situ. It has a small drip tray, which we'll come back to. It features a Sage or Breville Thermojet, their newer faster thermocoil. And for that reason, it features a crazy fast three second warm up time. And we'll come back to that too. It has a three-way solenoid valve, a nine bar OPV, a PID with a fixed brew temperature of 93 degrees Celsius, 200 degrees Fahrenheit, and low pressure pre-infusion. It has a pro steam wand with a four hole steam tip and you can steam manually or on auto. It doesn't have a hot water button, but it will dispense hot water from the steam wand if you know how. So it's a super compact espresso machine with some interesting sounding features. It'll auto steam your milk amazingly well and pretty quickly too. And the steam ready time is crazy fast as is the shot ready time after steaming. It auto purges a steam wand each time you steam and has programmable volumetric shot buttons. So more features than you could shake a stick at. But let's forget all that for a minute and get into the most important question. Is the espresso any good really? Yes. yes. This little thing can make really good espresso. And it does it with a kind of user friendliness that you don't really get from any other espresso machines in a similar price point, except for other Sage or Breville machines. This is ultimately why the Bambino Plus sells so well, because it's so easy to use and it makes brilliant espresso. Plus, it'll produce incredible milk texture, auto or manual. In fact, I'll go out on a limb here and say that most people using this machine paired with a Dose Control Pro, Smart Grinder Pro or Baratza Encore ESP will be able to make better flat whites, lattes and cappuccinos than practically any of the big cafe chains. And this is from a setup including one of the grinders I've just mentioned at about 570 to 610 pounds in the UK or 660 dollars to 700 dollars in America at retail price, but you'll find better deals in this most of the time. So if you're someone who gets frustrated at what cafes in your area think is a flat white, with this machine and a capable grinder, that frustration is over from around 450 pounds or 550 dollars or even less when you hold out for the best deals. If you're in the UK, Germany, France and some other mainland European countries, see the info in the description about joining my mailing list for potential discount codes and deals. So why is this really small, really cheap, relatively speaking, machine capable of making such good espresso? There are five main reasons for this, which are, let's have some basket banter. The Bambino Plus comes with standard baskets and pressurized dual walled baskets. Most of the cheaper entry level machines are pressurized basket or pressurized porta filter machines made to work with pre ground coffee. And they're more about making the espresso look the part and taste the part, which is why Gaja refer to them as perfect crema baskets. You can't really dial in with pressurized baskets. You just get what you get. If you're using normal commodity coffee with a best before date, but no roasted on date, then you'll be better off using a pressurized basket rather than trying to dial in using a standard basket. And I think this is the main reason that they include the pressurized baskets with these machines, as the instructions state that the dual wall basket should be used for these kinds of beans. But an increasing number of people are buying machines like this to enjoy freshly roasted coffee. And anyone doing this is gonna struggle with pressurized baskets because you can't really dial in with these. And you really need to dial in with freshly roasted beans. 
Dialing in, if you're not familiar with the term, just means tweaking the grind size and other things in order to get the best espresso with the beans you're using. With some of the other entry-level machines, you can convert them to standard basket either just by swapping out the basket or by swapping out or modding the porter filter. But then you have a standard basket, often with a 13 or 14 bar OPV, which isn't the end of the world, but a 9 bar OPV is easier. Let's discuss dose. Dose relates to the amount of coffee being dosed into the basket. Usually, especially with entry-level espresso machines, the user is given quite vague instructions where the dose is concerned, and it's usually only given in weight with no focus on volume. Not only do you get a specific dose in weight with this machine, 18 grams for the double basket, it also comes with the razor tool, which ensures the correct dose volume. I'm not gonna get really geeky here, but at the end of this video, on the left-hand side, my left, your right, or put the what is dose video. Click that if you want a more in-depth guide on understanding dose. There'll be a link in the description to that too. Anyway, as a combination of the specific dose weight and the razor tool, it's much easier to get the dose right with this machine, and dose is really important. Let's prattle about pressure. When it comes to pressure, as I mentioned, the overpressure valve is set to nine bars, and with most of the cheaper options on the market, this is more like 13 or 14 bars. Some brands don't even mention an OPV, but as far as I'm aware, even those brands shouting about 15 bars or even 19 bars of pressure as if it's a good thing will have an OPV limiting the basket pressure to about 13 or 14, as this seems to be the ideal for pressurised baskets. If you're using freshly roasted coffee and the standard baskets, a 9 bar OPV is going to make it a bit easier to get a decent extraction without worrying about too high a pressure increasing the chances of channelling. Let's talk about temperature. Temperature stability relates to the ability of the machine to keep the brew temperature the same. With single boiler or thermocoil machines with one heater responsible for both steam and brew, it's important that they can take the temperature up to steam temperature and then back down to brew temperature and hold it there. Nearly all of the entry-level espresso machines struggle with temperature stability, and this includes all of the cheaper options and some options higher up the price list, including the Gaja Classic and Ranchilio Silvia. Having a PID, a temperature controller, means this machine is impressively temperature stable. It isn't perfect because this stability is in the heater itself and not in the group, so there's a bit of user interaction required to ensure that the group and the porter filter are also up to temperature. It also isn't perfect because 93 degrees isn't perfect for every coffee, but I'll explain how to deal with this shortly. Let's ponder pre-infusion. The final thing to talk about where the espresso quality is concerned is pre-infusion. Pre-infusion comes from commercial espresso machines. Because they're plumbed in, they can pre-infuse at line pressure before the pump is engaged, and this means introducing the water to the puck of coffee at a low pressure. As I mentioned earlier, channeling is one of the biggest causes of poor taste in espresso, and it's more prevalent than you might think. One of the really clever things Sage or Breville have done with all their espresso machines is to create low pressure pre-infusion by controlling the pump power. It's factory preset to about 8 seconds, and you can't reprogram the buttons where pre-infusion is concerned, but if you pull the shots manually, you can customise the pre-infusion time from 0 to 10 seconds. You do this simply by pressing and holding the shot button for however long you want pre-infusion to last, and then removing your finger from the button to allow the pressure to ramp up, and then pressing the shot button again to stop the shot. So in a nutshell, the reason the Bambino Plus is capable of such good espresso for such a low-cost machine is a combination of these important espresso parameters, which you won't find on any other similarly priced machines except for the Bambino, which has most of these, and I'll go into detail in the comparison video. As I've said, it's not completely perfect, no machine at this price is ever going to be, but keep watching and I'll explain how to overcome the main imperfection of this machine, along with a couple of other very useful tips. Steaming milk. I said something slightly controversial earlier that basically this machine is the antidote to flat white frustration. If all your local cafes only serve flat shite, this machine with a bit of learning on the espresso side and no learning at all on the milk steamer side will solve that problem for you. And here's proof. You might say that I'm someone who's experienced with espresso machines, and okay, you will need to go through a bit of a learning curve where espresso is concerned, if you've not used a traditional espresso machine, but where the milk is concerned, it's literally as easy as one, pour milk into the jug. Two, put the wand in the milk and make sure the jug is on the temperature sensor. Three, press the steam button. That's it. A couple of bonus tips. To purge the one before steaming, press the steam button and just press it again as soon as steam starts flowing, usually a second or so. To purge after steaming, it happens automatically when you push the one back down, but if you want to do it manually, you can press and hold the steam button. 
For flat white, I'd have the texture setting at number one and the temperature at number two. For milk alternatives that tend to do better at a slightly lower temperature, such as almond and soy, I'd probably stick to temperature setting one, but obviously you can play around with that. Just look at the milk texture on this flat white. Many people will say this is what they're looking for in a flat white. Not this, which is what you'll get in a lot of the big cafe chains. To steam manually, you just pull the wand out and use it as you would any other pro steam wand and push it back to purge. Always wipe your wand. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of other things to mention. The Thermojet heater and the four hole steam tip make for really decent milk texture. And it's quick too, both in terms of steam ready time and steaming time. It's quite unusual to be able to start steaming so quickly after pulling the shot and to be able to go back down to shot temperature so quickly after steaming milk too. So this does really help with workflow when making milkies. It comes with the proper metal tamper, not the plastic toy tamper they bundle with the Bambino. There's a one cup and two cup shot button, which are both reprogrammable volumetric shot buttons with preset pre-infusion. I'll go into this more in the cleaning video, but the cleaning or back flush cycle and descaling cycle are really easy to do. And there's very little to do in terms of daily maintenance. So it's been all positive so far, but naturally there are cons as well as pros. So let's talk about what they are and more importantly, how to overcome them. One, the porter filter. I'm not a big fan of the porter filter that comes with the Bambino Plus. I don't like the stubby spouts. They don't do a good job of equally splitting the shot if you're splitting into two cups. I don't like the amount of plastic inside them and I'd far prefer them to come with a nicer, higher quality porter filter that comes with the Barista Express and the Barista Pro. Work around. Start out with the standard porter filter, see what you think, and if you're not a fan, order the porter filter for the Barista Express or Barista Pro, or get an aftermarket 54mm compatible porter filter. There are loads available now. Two, the small drip tray. The drip tray takes about 150 mil before you really need to think about emptying it. You could take it up to about 200 mil at a push, but you'd have to be very careful when removing it. It's very close to full at that point. Each auto purge of the steam wand is around 30 mil, and about five to 10 mil is fired off via the solenoid valve into the drip tray after every shot. So you'll have to empty the drip tray every few drinks if you're making milkies. Work around. Put a cup or jug under the wand before pushing it down so it auto purges into that instead of the drip tray. Three, the machine likes to move. I like to move it, move it. Because it's so narrow and lightweight, it'll move around as you're locking and unlocking the porter filter. Work around. I don't really need to tell you this as you'll just end up doing it naturally, but you just need to get into the habit of holding the machine with one hand while you lock and unlock the porter filter with the other. If you only have the use of one arm, which I know from personal experience can be a real problem, this injury led me not to be able to use my left hand at all for months. You'd need to find some way of securing the machine to the worktop. Probably not super glue, but I'm sure there's some way to do it. Four, fixed 93 degrees Celsius or 200 degrees Fahrenheit brew temperature. At this brew temperature, the Bambino Plus is perfect for espresso roast profile. So if you're using medium dark to dark roast, this isn't going to be a problem for you. If you're using lighter roasts, 93 degrees is going to be a bit of a challenge in brew temperature for some beans. The Barista Pro, for example, and the Barista Express, Express Impress, Touch and Touch Impress all have a maximum brew temperature of 95 degrees Celsius. They come factory preset to 93 and you can knock it up to 94 or 95 or down to 92 or 91. The Bambino Plus is fixed at 93 degrees Celsius, so you can't do this. Work around, stick to medium dark to dark roasts. If you're in the UK, see my beginner home barista collection box, which comes with four 250 gram bags of freshly roasted beans, which are perfect for the Bambino Plus. Use YT25 for 25% off your first order. Another workaround if you're getting really sour under extracted shots with slightly lighter roasts is to up the ratio. For example, one to three instead of one to two, and also to grind slightly finer and to make sure you're properly pre-warming the machine. There's a link in the description to a video on ratio in case you want to learn more about that. Five, inconsistent first and second shots. I get emails from readers and viewers and members of my Brewtime mailing list, link in description, asking for help with inconsistent first and second shots. Usually the issue is that the first shot seems okay and the next shot at the same grind size takes much longer or sometimes the first shot is under extracted so they change the grind size just slightly and the next attempt chokes the machine completely. The cause of this, as far as I can tell, is simply that the tiny, very effective thermocoil heats up in just three seconds, but everything else is stone cold. Work around. Do the preheat flush for longer. 
Most people who contact me about this tell me that they do follow my tip of always flushing water through the group, but the fact that the second shot is so different from the first suggests that this flush isn't doing a good enough job of pre-warming everything up. So the easiest way to fix this is just to do the flush for longer and make sure you're doing it with the portafilter in place and with the cup below so that you're warming everything up, including the cup. Six, no hot water button. I have to say, I don't know why this is the case. The Bambino does have a hot water button. The Bambino Plus doesn't. It does seem like an odd choice, but it's not a big deal. You just have to press two buttons instead of one. Work around, pull the wand out, press and hold the one cup shot button and the froth setting button. Water flows from the wand and press the one cup shot button again to stop. I have heard from one or two people that this doesn't work with their machine, but I actually think it works with just about all versions. I think some people who've reported that it doesn't work just didn't pull the wand out first. Do I think this is the best espresso machine on the market for the money? I've used this machine a lot since 2020 and honestly for the retail price and even more so for the price you can often get this for when it's on offer, I think this is the best espresso machine on the market for the price for most people. I say for most people, if you want the convenience of the auto steaming and as you've seen it really is very very good at that then I don't think there's anything on the market close to the price that would be better for you. If you're not bothered about auto steam, then you might want to look at the Bambino, but there are a couple of other pros and cons in addition to the auto steaming. Click the subscribe button and the bell icon to make sure you don't miss the new Versus video, which will be released very soon. You also might want to look at the Gadget Classic Pro if you're not bothered about the auto steaming, and if you're not too concerned with the level of user friendliness that you get from this, which isn't quite the same with the Classic. The Classic Pro is about £100 more in the UK than the Bambino Plus, but they're about the same price in America. Plus, if you get it from Whole Latte Love, the new Evo Pro comes with a 9x OPV, while at present in the UK, the new version still comes with the higher pressure OPV, so you'll need to mod it, although it's a very cheap and simple mod. So there we go, my brand new updated overview review video of the Sage or Breville Bambino Plus. Stay tuned, or whatever, to see the other updated videos we're doing, including Bambino vs Bambino Plus and various others. And remember, if there's any videos you want us to do, let me know in the comments or in the community thread. Farts travel at seven miles an hour, which has... <laughs> Farts travel at seven miles an hour, which has nothing to do with clicking the like button, but click the like button if you're wondering if there's such a thing as a fart speed gun. Mm -hmm. And yes, I did decide to do this fact just so we could use that particular like button sound effect. Thank you very much for watching, and if you're smitten with coffee and enjoyed this video, we've got tons of content about how to make better coffee at home to take you from beginner to home barista. We've got reviews and how-tos on the most popular machines. If you like the sound of that, click on my face to subscribe. Tatty bye! <laughs>